Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, another border that's causing concern for the government is in Ireland, where Brexit is one part of what's pushed power sharing to the brink. Our Ireland correspondent David Blevins sat down with the president of Sinn Féin, Gerry Adams, and began by asking him about Article 50 and what Brexit might mean for the border. Gerry Adams, we are sitting in a hotel right on the Irish border, which will in due course be the place on tarmac where the European Union ends and the United Kingdom begins. How do you police that without some kind of border control? Well, you can't. And we've been saying from day one of the referendum result that the only outcome, if the frontier between the European Union and the non-European Union is on the island of Ireland, then it's going to be a hard economic frontier. And, you know, we are sitting on the border, as you say, and if you go to the other side here, you just see how it snakes. You know, even as you look here, one field will be on the border, the other field will be on the other side of the border, and that's the nature of it. So we have argued in Sinn Féin, and the Irish Parliament has voted in support of this, and all of the parties elected, the majority of them, uh, their, their MLAs to the Assembly in the North support the proposition of a special designated status for the North. That's the only way to stop a hard frontier being erected here. But why would a British Prime Minister accept special designated status for Northern Ireland within the European Union, given that that really would be a united Ireland by the back door? Well, it wouldn't be because it wouldn't infringe on the constitutional issue. That can only be sorted out if a majority of people in the North and in the South uh, vote for it. And I'm a United Ireland and want to see nothing uh, else in terms. I just think it's sensible. It isn't just uh, an emotional thing. I just think that in a small land mass like this with such a small population, uh, unity means a good economy. Unity means good health services. It means decent environment, good energy use, and all the rest of it. But uh, we have to deal with what is essentially an English problem. The, the, the English government, because they're ignoring what the people of Scotland want, they're ignoring what the people of the north of Ireland want, uh, it isn't up to them. Because the European Council or the Commission or the Parliament, in other words, the other European, the 26, 27 states, they will decide uh, what's going to happen. You talked a little bit about Scotland there. Scotland's First Minister has sent a letter to Downing Street demanding a referendum on Scottish independence. If you believe people here would vote for Irish unity at this point, why have you not sent a similar letter demanding a referendum? Well, we're exploring the situation in Scotland slightly more advanced than it is, and the two aren't the same anyway. Uh, so we're exploring the context in which we may do that with, with the two governments. I'm content that we should have a debate that we should look at the, the merits, as I would see it, or the demerits, as maybe a unionist might see it. But I'm also very, very conscious that Republicans should not be seen in any way exploiting the consequences of Brexit, because the type of Ireland we want has to be one in which unionism, which unionist, decent unionists, are content. That, that needs to be agreed. It, it, it needs to give them their place. It, it needs to respect everything that they want. Uh, in terms of uh, the way forward. I, I can't be like, you know, put, putting the shoe on the other foot. Uh, we don't want, I don't want, uh, you know, as, as, as someone who was born into a state that didn't want me, I don't want uh, a, a new Ireland to be anything other than a harmonious uh, fraternity of all the people who live on this island. It's not too harmonious at Stormont right now, and the absence of a devolved government is just a complication in terms of what's going on with Brexit. How has Sinn Féin come from a position of being willing to share power with unionists to being reluctant to do that over what many people would see as relatively minor issues like an Irish Language Act? Well, 
you're right insofar as the issues we have to deal with are not as uh, difficult as issues which we have dealt with in the past and resolved in the past. And I put that to our, our unionist partners in the course of the, the, the recent talks. Uh, and it isn't that we're reluctant to share power. I, mean, I, I believe fully and we're wedded to the Good Friday Agreement and to the political institutions. But as Martin McGuinness has said, there can be no return to the status quo. So what went wrong was that terms of previous agreements and accords were not uh, implemented, were not delivered. And when you have somebody as big and as strong and as uh, formidable as Martin, he, he, he could carry that to a certain degree for the rest of us. Martin's gone. So any, even if we were able to cobble together something tomorrow, it wouldn't last. So I want it to be sustainable. One of the other issues on the negotiating table, of course, is legacy. And for Sinn Féin, that's about getting British soldiers in the dock. But many people would say, what about the victims of IRA violence? What about their right to justice? Well, it isn't about getting British soldiers in the dock. It's about the victims of British soldiers being treated exactly the same as the victims of the IRA or any other combatant uh, force. Our position has been for an international independent truth commission that everybody can make use of, but we compromised on this issue. And yes, I believe that victims of the uh, IRA, or at least their relatives, have the right to truth. And I believe that those who are victims of uh, British army violence or state violence also have the right to truth. And the British government is holding that back. The Lord Chief Justice has said in terms of uh, legacy inquests, for example, that the funding should be made available. There's funding set aside under that agreement. The British government is refusing to uh, issue that funding. And some of these families have fought for an inquest, and I know in one case, for 43 years. So that's not fair. Jerry, you talk about those mechanisms, perhaps for truth and reconciliation. Six months ago, Martin McGuinness told me if those mechanisms existed, he was quite prepared to talk about his past. If they existed, would Jerry Adams find it easier to talk about his past and his long alleged involvement in the IRA? Yes, I, I have said, and Martin and I said this together, and we've said it quite a few times, that we would both do our best and we would also encourage other Republicans to come forward if there was a satisfactory arrangement put in place. And that's my, <coughs> that's my uh, commitment. Uh, Martin's not here, uh, but that's still my commitment. In his eulogy, President Clinton said Martin McGuinness had been married to Gerry Adams for nearly as long as he'd been married to his wife, Bernie. You must miss him terribly. Yes, I do. Uh, I, I miss him in terms of the daily grind of the work that we're doing. This is the very first, and this is from 1972, the first talks process that he and I haven't been together. Uh, but I miss him also at a personal level, uh, deeply so. And uh, I, I sort of reconcile myself to that because I know you have to go through a grieving process. So many people knew Martin McGuinness. He was, he was a fixture for decades. Uh, he's more affable than me. He's more outgoing than me. He's not as shy as me. So you find that, you know, I, I used to say, getting Martin out of a meeting or out of a venue or out of a, an event was like getting, trying to get a drunk man out of a pub. Because he would want to have the crack and talk and shake hands with and swap stories with every single person there. And that was his nature. And that's, that's, that's one of the reasons why people think of him so fondly. Sinn Féin President Gerry Adams there.